Hello, welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you again. Bitwig Studio 2 drum machine course. And uh, we've just finished up a few tutorials on the sampler, understanding better how to manipulate and operate our samples within the sampler that is clearly part of our uh, drum machine here. So let's kind of, let's get the ball rolling, get onto some of the meaty, juicy stuff and start making some really cool um, drum patterns. So there's a there's a way we can bring in our samples. We've talked about that in previous tutorials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a loop, a really simple little basic loop, drum beats. Um, let's see if we can figure out something that sounds pretty easy for us. Yeah, that one will work. So we'll drag this guy in, drop it here. And we don't need that window open anymore. So we've got our, our drum loop right here. And let's go ahead and uh, create a drum kit out of it. So the first thing we can do is we can isolate that kick because we need the kick. So we'll remember from previous tutorials, we can zoom in our loop start, or I mean our start stop end, and we'll just dial that up and we'll get this tuned in as good as we can. Maybe right in there looks good to me. Let me hear what that sounds like. Yeah, pretty good. So also if you remember from previous tutorials, we can rename and we can hold down the alt key and drop and drag. So I'm going to chop up the same loop. So I'm just, I dropped and dragged it over one to make a copy of it. Now I'm going to rename the first one, just simply make it kick. If I can spell. And first one is kick. Now we've got the same loop right here. And we're just going to move down now and isolate the next sound. So let's go about right here. And I think that was a hi-hat. Let's zoom in so we can get our markers really, really good from start to end here. And let's uh, preview it. Yeah, that'll work. So that is, I think that's closed. Let me hear it again. I think it's closed. Yeah. That command R will be our closed hi-hat. And we will simply hold down the Alt key. And we will drag this one over to the next. And let's highlight this guy. And let's see what our next sound is that we can find. Should be a snare in here somewhere. Preview. That's another hi-hat. That's an open hi-hat, so we can definitely use that guy. Let's zoom in on our bar down here and get this guy dialed in a little bit better so we make sure we're getting rid of the end of this kick that's kind of bleeding over to it. So we'll go about right there to say right there. Yeah, that'll work. And we can adjust the attack just a little bit because what I don't want any of that kick to bleed in. That sounds better. And we'll rename this guy to open hi-hat. And we'll just continue our alt copy. And we'll highlight this guy. And I thought there was a snare in here. Maybe I didn't hear it. I don't know. Let's just, I'm going to open that up all the way and just hear it. That snare is actually in with our kick. if it's that way with the first one. So this kick is all by itself, but the two and the four kick has got our snare. So obviously you can pick easier loops to work with, but what I'll do now is isolate that second one and just, that'll be my second and fourth kick to allow me to have my snare sound. Let's zoom in. 
Make sure we're getting nice and tight on the front of that. And make sure we're staying over here as far as we can. And I want to point out something that is kind of important when you're chopping loops like this. Let me zoom in a little bit better. See the, um, the waveform going up and down and then the middle line, that's the zero cross. Whenever you chop, you want to make sure you're chopping at a, not at a point where the waveform is away from the zero cross. You want to chop at a point where they both meet. So in other words, where the zero cross meet. That way you're getting a nice clean chop of the sound. And we will rename this guy to kick slash snare. That way I know it's kick and snare together. All right, so there we got a nice, we brought in a loop and we chopped it up and got our sounds all arranged. I am actually gonna do this. I'm gonna move these guys around a little bit just to keep myself organized. Get two kicks close together and then uh, close and open hi-hats together outside. So let me talk a little bit about a couple different ways that you can actually build your own drum kits. You can do it from a bunch of one-shot samples that you may have from a pack or a sample pack or CD or something you own. Or you can do it from loops, again, from, you know, sample packs and things. Or you can do it from live uh, recorded audio of your own. But let's talk about one-shots specifically. There's nothing wrong with it. You can build some really unique drum kits with those. But I find those are often inconsistent when you're using um, one-shots that aren't necessarily from the same drumming session. You can get different pitch and different consistencies in sound and quality. So what I like to do as far as building my own drum kits is use loops because I, more often than not, they were recorded by the same sound engineer. They were recorded by the same drum session and the same drummer. So you get a consistency in the sound within the loop. There's a consistent flow and an overall vibe to that loop that you can just bring in and chop up and kind of make your own. So just a personal kind of thought on, you know, loops and one shots and things like that. So of course, do whatever is best for your projects and whatever best for the style of music you want to create. But just thought I'd share with you the reason I decided to do a loop for our tutorial. So what do we got here? So we've got our kick, kick snare, closed hi-hat, and open. So we've got a nice little set up there and, and it was pretty simple we just went in and chopped it up you know using our start and end points here but let's say you actually had um you know the ability to record your own drum session record your own drums in so let's let's say you recorded your own drums in and they're within the arrangement here your recording is here and you wanted to bring that into the uh, drum machine I'm going to take the same loop we just worked with. I'm going to drop it onto another track right here. I'll hit solo just to show you it's the same one. And then show you, if, let's, let's assume this is your live recording that you've brought into your session. What, we can, what you can do is simply zoom in to the waveform. And you can see exactly where that kick is, where that hi-hat lives, and then our kick snare is on this one, and so on and so forth throughout the rest of the uh, loop. We can simply hover over, you know, if you're zoomed in far enough, if you want to get in a little closer, that's fine. And we can even make this guy taller. But if you're zoomed in to where you want, you know, to cut, say like um, right here, I can simply click there. I can do a right click and I can cut it with a knife or I can do an edit or I'm sorry, not edit. It was uh, these guys somewhere over here. Darn it. Oh, here it is. Duh. Man, I'm losing my mind a little bit. All right, so you got another selection over here you can choose from your edit tools. So I am just gonna simply right click and I'm gonna say knife and cut. So now, if I go back to my pointer tool, I've got this kick drum sample isolated right from our loop, and I can simply drag it and drop it. 
and cancel. And then it's going to give me my, my, um, how I want it cut. I want to cut it with audio event, I believe. Number of slices. This will, yeah. So you want to select slice at audio event. This will create one slice and hit, uh, or maybe it's slice raw. No, I don't want to bounce and slice. Let's see what happens. And here, we've got our kick. Well, I'm not hearing it because I have this soloed. But there's our kick. So that is another way that you can actually take your own audio, kind of cut, bring it in, and drop it into the drum machine. It's a simply doing, essentially doing the same exact thing that we did here, where we use the uh, start and end markers. We can just come up here and chop it up individually like this if we choose, and then drag it down and drop it in. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and we don't need this guy anymore. So now that we've got some uh, samples loaded up here, let's go ahead and double click our MIDI region for this channel. Because a drum machine on its own right now, it won't do anything. If I hit play, and let me put the loop marker at the end of this uh, clip here, there's nothing happening. We have to tell it what to do, and we do that through MIDI. So we've got our keyboard, and then now we've got all our individual sounds right here that tell us what we want to do. So let's um, let's put in a little pattern here and have some fun. So there's a kick, and that's a little too big. The kick is way too long. All right, so let me get rid of that. I don't need that. Um, and let's do a um, – I'm just going to – randomly figure out something here. Let's do a uh, closed hi-hat here. Uh, snare on the two. So that'll be the kick in the snare. And another closed hi-hat. Say uh, right here. We'll do our kick down here. And we'll do our kick snare on our four. And closed hi hat. And how about an open hi hat right here? Let's see what that sounds like. It might sound like garbage, it might sound pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? So we were able to bring in a loop chop it up, grab the sounds we like, and they're all consistent. Again, like I was talking about earlier, it's important to have that consistency amongst your sounds. And then we were uh, able to put together a, a pattern that's different from that loop, original pattern. And create our own nice little groove. So let's go ahead and move on to the next tutorial and um, see what else we can do with our... Uh, newly found kind of recreated uh, drum beats and redesigned loop here. Let's take a look at maybe even layering beats. How about that? That sounds like something cool to figure out. Talk to you in the next tutorial.